So we just solved for the force on the top part of the half sphere. Now we're going to solve for the force on the disc. So the force on the disc is going to be the integral on the surface of T tensor dot dA vector. Um, the T's uh, change in magnitude, they don't change in, in the, the thetas and phi's are the same. So I'm just going to use the same equation I used before. No, our dA is different, isn't it? Our dA for the disk is going to be, has to point down. So it's going to be minus r vector dr, no, not r vector, d phi in the k hat direction. Okay, that's the um, infinitesimal area in it. So uh, we can reuse our x's. It's going to do the same little business here. We can reuse our um, uh, tx, ty, and tz. Where did they go? Ah, we'll solve them again. They're pretty easy to solve. Okay, so that so t dot da vector is going to be <coughs> again. We only care about the z component, so we're only going to care about the z component. So we have TZZ DAZ. So what's TZ? Uh, I'm sorry, TXZ DAX. Well, there's only the k hat direction. So only TZZ survives. DAX. So that's TZZ is uh, epsilon naught over 2 times EX, EZ squared minus EX squared minus EY squared times minus r dr d phi okay and this is the sum total of the entire vector um, pointing in the z direction so all right and um, so the electric field what's the magnitude of the electric field well we have the insight here this is the magnitude of the electric field so we take that squared we can pull that out times um, the z direction. Let's see, when you're on the surface, the electric field is pointing only outwards. So only the x and the y components matter. Okay, so these minus signs cancel, so we're going to get um, ex squared plus ey squared times r dr d phi in the k hat direction. Okay, so um, Let's look at how it varies. So in this direction, this direction, so we're going to square these, sine squared theta, cosine squared phi, sine squared theta, sine squared phi. So it's just sine squared theta. So e magnitude of e squared What's sine squared theta? That's just one. Okay, so that drops out as well. <clears throat> so we're left with um, feel like I'm missing something, but I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, there's an extra factor of little r. Okay, so now we have the integral along the surface of this e squared. What's e on the inside? So it's 1 over 4 pi q r over r cube squared r dr d phi. Once again, the integral over d phi is just going to be 2 pi. Um, so we have to take the integral. Let's, let's bust it out here. So epsilon naught uh, over 2, 1 over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared q squared over r to the sixth um, and the integral from 0 to r of r cubed dr
double checking everything, making sure it looks kosher. Indeed it does. Okay, so we got epsilon, oh, one over four pi epsilon naught. One of the pi's is gone. The two's cancel. So we have um, one over four r to the sixth q squared. And then this little dude is r to the fourth over four. Evaluated in zero and r. So obviously r is zero, zero. So it's r, uh, r to the fourth, one over four pi epsilon naught q squared over 16 r squared in the k hat direction. <coughs> That's the total force for the 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 surface between the two halves. So let's add them together. So we have that guy plus that guy, both of them in the k hat direction. Um, where did my previous solution go? Where is he hiding? Ah, here he is. Force on the top is in the k hat direction as well. So we add them up. So we get one over four pi epsilon naught. We have q squared, and then we have r squared, or eight. We have r squareds on as well. So we have one eighth plus one sixteenth. That's three sixteenths. Okay. Yep. There we go. That's the total force. There's the answer. Okay. Now, the hardest part of this was just keeping track of the different indices. And, you know, it took, what, four pages for me to solve this with a big fat black marker. It should take you at least one page to solve it, um, assuming you take the shortest path, which you probably won't, which is okay. You know, you need to kind of explore different nooks and crannies of math anyway. Um, the next section, I will calculate for you the, um, the big dome, so using the whole space above the xy plane. So, get that to in a minute. Actually, let's do it right now. It's not too hard. Um, so we can actually use um, this same stuff pretty much, except for our E is the E outside. Okay. So T dot DA in the Z direction. That's going to be T ZZ. Once again, the surface is pointing down. D A in the Z direction. Okay, um, so we get minus r d r d phi, that's the z component, and then t z z is epsilon naught over 2 e z squared minus e x squared minus e y squared. This is the electric field outside the um, outside the sphere. So we substitute in uh, minus r dr d theta epsilon naught over 2 e squared and then so let's look at this really quickly. So we have the z component of um, of our vector. We took a shortcut before. I'm trying to remember what it was. E z squared minus e x squared minus e y squared. Um. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. So e z squared. So z is <coughs> um, using our r. So z is cosine squared theta. And then this is minus sine squared theta because this one's uh, cosine phi and this one's sine phi sine squared phi cosine sine squared phi cosine squared phi, both with the coefficient of sine squared theta. Um, um, and the I, I feel, get a feeling like I did something wrong again. Let me double check now. Ah, that's right. Since we're at theta equals power over 2, 
this is 0, and this is 1, and so the total is r dr d phi epsilon naught over 2, the magnitude of e squared. Okay? Let's plug that into the integral. Well, actually, let's, let's substitute in the magnitude of e squared. So if r dr d phi epsilon naught over 2, um, so that's q squared um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught squared r cubed and we have an r um, where is my electric field on the top hiding ah I'm sorry I did this wrong this electric field outside is 1 over r squared so we have 1 over r squared squared r to the fourth and then we have an r on the top so it becomes r to the third so we have um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught with our q squared over um, we have a 2 pi and we have a 2 times another, we have another 4 because that would be 1632 1632 and then we have r cubed okay then we do the integral from 0 to 2 pi d phi the integral 0 to pi, 0 to, I'm um, sorry, we're going from, starting from r going out to infinity of 1 over r cubed dr and we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon out on the front it's q squared over 2 pi 4 times 2 pi okay so this 2 pi and this cancels out so that's uh, 1 over q over um, q over 4 pi okay 4 1 over r cubed that's just minus um, minus 1 fourth 1 over r to the fourth why does he have r cubed on the top I feel like I did something strange here Ah, figured it out. This is actually a square. And that's evaluated in r and infinity. So we get a negative r, negative 1 over r squared. So we get 1 fourth. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over 16 r squared, which looks exactly like the. Um, no, hold on, not 16. That can't be right. I did something funny again. 1632. Ah, this is 1 half, not 1 fourth. This is 8 r squared, which is the exact answer we got when we calculated the force on the upper bowl. And this works. The only reason why this works that we calculate along this infinite plane is because the the force can only act on the charges it doesn't act on empty space you can't push or pull on empty space even with magnetic fields um, you could transfer momentum which is kind of weird but you can't push or pull but um, the end result is that those two integrals should resolve the same thing so we we basically proven the entire problem 16 uh, hopefully you've had fun watching me struggle um, it's, it was kind of hard for me to keep all the details in my head at once but I was able to piece it together I think I paused it a couple times too you might have noticed anyway take care Thanks. Next is the next section, um, section 754, where we talk about the conservation momentum using uh, the pointing vector. So take care. Bye.